Welcome to the Kinjas Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f*** we want. <laughs> Folks, welcome back or welcome to Kinjas Movement in the Shadows. We are your hosts, Ben and Anthony. Boom. Folks, today we have no reason to introduce this guy, but we're going to do it anyway. We have dancer, choreographer, <laughs> creative director, entrepreneur, husband to Addy. <laughs> Father to Odin, the handsome boy. I don't know who it is yet. And brother to all of us. We have the co-founder of Kinjas. We have Mike Song. My career. You, yeah, you are you. probably the most <laughs> veteran guest. Like the most seasoned guest. Am I? And the most frequented guest. As you should be. As you should be. <laughs> that makes sense, I? I guess. Yes, I'm you a, are. I, I guess so. No, you've been on the pod maybe like at least five or six times what no yes yeah you probably jumped on Easily. pods for other people yeah, too that's right? what i'm saying five or like, six Easily. like you probably jumped on when like quest was there I was on quest you might have jumped on when oh I, I did one that was un- unreleased yeah we did an unreleased <laughs> one. i guess if you count that <laughs> yeah, one that we had an unreleased pod did you come on with addy one time uh no no but we've yeah. done like two just solos with yeah. you it's probably the two solos, the this unreleased one. This is like your one, third and solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like I said, yeah, five or six. The unreleased one was just a guinea pig episode because we were testing out this new setup. That's how Mike. <laughs> that's how you know he's dope. He's like, "Hey, you guys don't know what you're doing? Okay, I'm down to be your guest." <laughs> yeah, everyone was falling asleep and shit. That was the burn. Like, that was a done. burner episode. We burned that one, or we'll upload it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but dude, Mike. Okay, okay, okay. Last time, I think we talked about a whole bunch of like kinja stuff but we're like man we want to just catch up with mike like just mike period Word. and appreciate i think it was 2022 right when we had the mike solo episode that was the season two yeah that was the, that was episode one of season two. Oh, that's right yeah. that's right but <sighs> even from then a lot has happened if y'all are really curious about mike's origin stories you got you got to go way back like <laughs> to e-bombs ever- world <laughs> Because that's when I was born. Yes, he was born. I was born at E Bombs World. On E Bombs World. That is that is the beginning of my Nate life. Elsewhere versus Mike's song. And for whoever's listening, that hits though. That's gonna it's hit. A, if you know, you know. What yeah, like things. if you want to see it, like literally, beginning of my life, sperm version of oh my Mike's goodness. song. There it is. My goodness. <laughs> um, but like, yeah. So we caught up with you last year, but a lot has happened Quite since lot, then. Yeah um bro like i'm gonna i'm just gonna let you take us on the journey i'm not okay. even gonna ask you a question oh, where do you snap. where do you want to start us off with that's oh. a question oh that's man question. <laughs> where do i want to start off with that's yes. that's a pretty tough question because i feel like uh you know i feel like no one really likes myself included likes talking about themselves but so I'm you like, have a lot michael oh man you have a oh. lot to say where where do I begin? A lot of life has happened, man. I feel like um, I don't exactly know when our which month of last year our podcast was, um, but last year in short was probably one of the one of the craziest years of my life, like hands down, easily, mm. if if not the craziest year of my life. Um, some of the uh, just to get into it, some of the lowest lows, some of the highest highs. Um, yeah, man. So <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that. What was the highest that? highs? The highest. Yeah. We'll start with, we'll start start with, with the highs. highs. Yeah, highest highs. Yes, let's start with the highs. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into like a... <sighs> Let me organize this in my brain because a lot of shit. Highest highs. I'm going to go into like uh, in tears. Okay. Um, I, Me and Addy moved. Mm-hmm. We, we we purchased a home. Let's That's go. probably Congrats, like one of bro. the biggest like that snaps like a, a Snap really, yeah. really big uh, um, moment for us last year, and so I think that was uh, um, like a big big journey stepping stone. But that was not the highest high of last year. That was just mm-hmm. a big uh, f- change of environment, mm-hmm. I should say. Um, I I ended up uh, doing some things like dance wise that were pretty landmark for me. Uh, I went to uh, I went to Korea to judge this dance show, this dance competition show called Street Man Fighter. I went to judge it twice, 
And that was, um, I feel like I got to give you cliff notes because really there's one thing that sticks out of my head, but it's a high and a low. But anyways. Ooh, give it to us. Give us that. Uh, yeah. Um, well, Stream Man Fire was cool because you were like unapologetically speaking uh Konglish, is that what it's called? Konglish. Yeah, Konglish. Konglish. Yeah. I'll take a bit with Stream Effort because that, was, that, that was, was a big on thing. Point. Thank you. Um, that that was a, um, a very like full circle moment for me for anyone who's listening who doesn't have any context. Um, I'll start from the beginning. There's this Korean show in South Korea called Street Man Fighter. Um, it started off as Street Woman Fighter. It's a dance competition show um and it's basically they're having a their big dance boom right now i mean they have several dance booms but this one i think commercially was really big for them so street woman fighter which is an all-female crew dance competition show was huge for them i believe uh i think this was last year uh or maybe it was two years ago so then last year street man fighter was the sequel season uh whereas all guy crews and um, the genesis of that is that actually they wanted, um, I don't know how many people know this, they wanted Kinjas to perform for this, but it didn't work out for uh, several different reasons. But uh, we ended up making that contact. And so uh, I ended up teaching at a university in Korea. And on that trip, because I was in Korea, I, we had that contact. And I just kind of threw out a Hail Mary and I was just like, I'm in Korea. And I just hit up our contact. That's all I said, just so you know. Um, and through that, they were like, oh, do you want to judge an episode of Street Man Fighter? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> I threw out the fishing line yeah. just to see if they would bite. But like, I didn't want to be too specific. I just said I was yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, they invited me to, to judge an episode of Street Man Fighter. And um, yeah, that was, that was one of the... Uh, it ended up being... Uh, far exceeding my expectations i went into not with really any i thought i I thought it'd be interesting i i had known some of the crews on the show which always makes something interesting when you're judging that but um when i did the show it ended up being this all sorts of emotions full circle type of experience uh for a lot of reasons one being a dancer two being a competitor as you got y'all know uh on shows like this uh, and then, and then being a Korean American, having this like weird connection to this, this show and that not even weird, just a straight up connection to this show. It ended up being this thing where I wasn't even prepared to speak Korean on the show, to be honest. I thought I was just going to be speaking English. They had a translator on set, but, um, long story short through the dynamic of the episode when I got there and, um, although they did prep me with some things the actual like social context of the episode didn't involve the contestants it was just me sitting alongside the judges <laughs> of the show who speak korean yeah and they're recording our um, reactions to judging video performances so when i realized this is just a recorded conversation of korean speakers <laughs> i was like I think if I just speak English and keep on breaking the flow, it's like if you guys interviewed someone who didn't speak English on the pod and had a translator in here. Right. The, you, there's no conversation yeah, flow, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just had to kind of Hail Mary like, all right, I got to dig back into all the Hangrakyo, Korean school, <laughs> like whatever <laughs> reserves I got in the back of my mind, I got to pull, pull a Hail Mary and just like go for it. Otherwise, yeah. this is not going to work. Um, and so I think, and, and who were just for the fans, who were the other judges at that time? Okay. Um, so we have, uh, Woo Hyuk, Woo Young and Boa. Wait, yeah. Woo Hyuk? No, not, 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 yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Not H with T, Woo Young. Yeah, 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 no, 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 That's the OG, OG. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, um, it was, uh, <coughs> yeah, it was cool to sit alongside these these people that I'm aware of. Actually, it was really cool because Woo Hyuk had visited Kinja's Dojo before. Oh, sick. When we weren't there, they filmed like this reality episode that we were aware of. And I was like, oh, you guys came to Dojo to film on your trip. Wow. And Ryan, Ryan Kim, shout yeah, out yeah, Ryan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Conversations. <laughs> uh, they, they, they literally... Um, he has a photo with them for when they visited. Oh, so that was kind of an icebreaker that when I yeah. sat down with them, he was like, yo, we visited Dojo. And I was like, oh my God, the the full circle connection to all this that's is hella funny. already beginning there. Yeah. So 
yeah man it was um i ended up speaking korean um uh and even just like as a korean american having that experience to connect with my culture but also and then on a dance level to really want to do right by all the dancers because mm. we we've been done wrong yes we have yes, <laughs> on we dance have. shows yes we have uh, and uh we're just gonna slide <laughs> right past that <laughs> But it really all, all that internalizes is like, like if I ever have the opportunity to like give a fuck to really, mm. really hyper analyze all of the, the competition, I'm going to really care. I'm going to really comment all this and to whoever's watching, hopefully be able to like spit some knowledge on dance culture. Um yeah, if there's just any moment, any moment that I could. So I tried my hardest to uh, to do justice to that. And so, um, yeah, through that experience, um, they ended up inviting me back for the finale. Um, and then, you know, congrats to to all the crews. But uh, Just Jerk happens Let's to be go, like one of our, our homie crews that we've seen. They competed at arena or they didn't compete at arena, but they've, um, they've taught at dojos. They've taught mm -hmm. at... Uh, Kinja's Dojo LA. They've taught at Kinja's Dojo China. Mm -hmm, they performed mm -hmm. at Kinja's Dojo China mm -hmm. for the grand opening of Beijing. Mm -hmm. Like we have history mm -hmm. with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so to see them, but to also feel like, um, I remember seeing them in the dressing room before the finale and they came by and they're like, yo, like you're in Korea. And I literally said to them right before the tape, I was like, bro, honestly, I didn't hit you guys up because I, I didn't want anyone to get the wrong idea that like maybe someone would be like wait they know each other maybe there's something you know crooked about this and i'm like hell nah i ghosted mm. my homies i ghosted oh. that like because i didn't that's like next yeah, level yeah, thinking, yeah 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 because i know yeah, 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 yeah. i know i know everyone like can think of weird rabbit holes that are not even true Whoa. but uh, you know but yeah. i'm like no i want to protect the sanctity of their hard work right and i'm not going to hit up my homies just so that like we're we're just like we're yeah. good but i ain't gonna hit you up i ain't even letting you know i'm in korea bro yep yep yep, yep. um because i wanted to respect that because i knew that they they had a chance and in my opinion like yeah they're they deserve to win so yeah man but hey, what is, oh go ahead no you go you thank go. you thank you yeah you I go appreciate, i will go yeah go on right. hey what does it feel like though when like people are like calling you og and stuff <laughs> Ooh. I'm sure you guys all know the feeling too now, uh, right? It's, yeah. It's interesting to like some podcasts. We're not on the wire right now. You know? it, that has been, I think, um, you know, on recent teaching trips, uh, just traveling trips in general, um, that's been the tone now. And it's it's interesting. I think what's unique about it is that I think the pandemic was like this fast forward, duh. But my what I mean by that is um in terms of our dance careers before the pandemic i feel like we weren't in og status in the dance community we were just in seasoned seasoned Damn, and pandemic doing made us it. OG. yeah <laughs> so so i feel like it like so much happened it's because hella young g's got yeah, born yeah. in the pandemic you know what yeah. i mean a whole hella new true, generation though. in classes yeah. people just became true. it and you know true. exactly that's true. That's true. so much happened during the pandemic like five years worth of dance happened in one and a half years that yeah i feel like there's a what's unique about it for us is there's a clear marker it's not this gradual like every now and then people are calling me an og now it was just like root pandemic first couple trips back they're like oh can you tell us about the history and they're just like suddenly like i'm like storyteller guy now and they're just <laughs> like listening and they're just talking about me where i was recently just in uh canada judging um uh, artists emerge and the, my co-judge uh, was uh, uh, he. He was a contestant in Artists Emerge ten years ago, when I judged, and now he's my co-judge. Whoa! And so straight up, like that, just ended up turning into Adrian Z. By the way, from Brotherhood, he was like super cool, and it was just uh, very uh, interesting to to just chat and feel that perspective of like what the heck and then they were posting photos of like look at this photo from 2013 artists emerge <laughs> with 
are two judges, but Mike was still a judge, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. To now, and then, yeah, now to come here uh, to judge, to Korea, to judge Street Man Fighter. And I think, you know, when those moments of like imposter syndrome kind of poke into your head, you're like, mm. oh man, how many people are qualified to judge this thing? How many this, that, all that. But when you kind of sit there and you're just like, okay, like I have years under my belt and mm -hmm. without even thinking actually, <laughs> I'm just like, man, I have a lot to share. I'm not even trying to preach. I just want to be like, hey, this is what happened. <laughs> like here are some things that go down and some right, extra context right, right. that I think is, is is important to share regarding dance. So um, hey, just put time in the game, you know. Yeah, you know, exactly. I, I do have yeah. one OG story that's kind of funny though. It's recent. Um, I was recently a summer jam in Vietnam. You know what I mean? And we was judging the competition. Hey, you and smashed us, summer jam, dude. At least I wasn't even there, but the videos that came out of that. Dude, it was yeah. Come was on, man. Definitely one of the most epic things probably in the history of my entire dance career for sure. I'm not gonna lie. I posted about that on my IG story yeah, just right yeah, now yeah. about oh, my, my video on TikTok yeah. of Matamiu yeah. fucking doing my whoopty routine has hit 40 million today. Oh my god! No, if not, you haven't seen it, I mean, if you haven't seen it, then like you, that means you're a you newcomer to the pod. Sleeping. Check out this video. But funny on funny thing is, funny thing is, I'm judging the the choreography competition, right? And uh, it's not enough for like all the people who are winning and stuff like that. I'm on stage. All these like people are like winning the competition. Like I started dancing because of you. That already makes you feel a little bit old, right? but and a lot of it was in vietnam so like you know vietnamese people like you know they were just really putting it up but the fellow judges including like henny who was like you know a student of like ours and stuff like that who's also like a judge now all these judges are like i'm the oldest one so they're like calling me og and stuff like that right and i'm like at this camp and it's summer jam I'm like, you cannot call me an OG at the same event that Mr. Wiggles shows up. <laughs> <laughs> it is like not so allowed. Makes, I don't even want to get caught. Like, yeah. you know Dude, what I mean? I totally know how you, I, yes, I can imagine yes, that. Because yes, like, I would feel yes. the same. I would feel the exact same. Wiggles is there. It's like, I am, I am a tadpole. <laughs> yeah, <dude. Like> you <laughs> I'm are not, not yet. I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah. Don't even bring that term <laughs> yeah, around my yeah. fucking 10 yeah, radius yeah. Yeah. meter yeah, or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think it's always contextual, but it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to, <laughs> it's like flattering. And at the same time, like at this period of my life, I would still say incorrect. What you know what I mean? Wow. You know, straight up, I think some of that is because of our Asian culture. I'm just straight it up going to acknowledge We're just that. too humble, bro. Our, our respect for our elders yeah. is so ingrained into our DNA. That's, that's it. That's that we it right still there. feel like this. Although there's some like 20, 18 year olds, teenagers, whatever, that look at us and are like, those motherfuckers are ancient. Yeah, we're old as fuck <laughs> to some people. But, but, but our culture makes us feel like, nah, like, I look at a wiggle, I would think the exact same thing. And I'd be like, yo, if I'm at the camp of wiggles, I'm just, I'm on the journey. You want to say OG? You go right there. Yeah. Or <laughs> you look at or that you're guy allowed that. To, Or you're allowed to call us OGs if there's like a clearly other class, like grandmasters. Yeah, 100%. You, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. an entire another yes, tier yes, yes, of yes, categorization. Yes, yes. We're, we're, yeah, I think we've entered like Kakashi. Mode. Oh my god! Yeah. Like they're all in that Jonin, Naruto, you know, like that phase. If that that's like the youngins that are crushing it, we're Kakashi, and he's that's a Kage right there. So for all the Naruto references, no, okay. no, no, come no, no, no. on, hey, hey, come you know on. For the, you know what? I think this is like a uh, a safe space podcast. Right okay, now. yeah, it is. This is a dangerous podcast. Once Mr. Wiggle starts listening, it's like, nah, fool, sit your ass down, nah. tadpole. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, oh, that's the best thing about yeah. That's why he's one of my, my, my favorite humans, man. I just feel like my spirit is saying, you can share this. Uh, I just got back from Vegas this weekend. Okay. Uh -huh. And, and uh, I, was, I was out there for the weekend. And um, legit, like KB from Jabberwocky yeah. was like, hey, bro, you ever like plan on coming out to Vegas? Like we should connect. And yeah. I was like, I can make a trip out to Vegas. Hell so yeah. I was like, okay. Uh -huh. So I made a trip out to Vegas. Uh -huh. I had no idea uh -huh. what the freak like I was going there for. Yeah, yeah. But I had a dope little dinner with them. Yeah, yeah, when I yeah. got in, connected, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Good. Da, 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 da. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh well, they're in rehearsals right yeah, now. Yeah, like yeah. you wanna hop in, like you wanna learn some moves? I'm like, yeah, I wanna learn some moves. Love Fuck it. Yeah. So, like, Love to I hopped hear. in rehearsal, learned some moves. I'm like learning some like the their new stuff yeah. that they just killed it at BC one. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? This stuff is crazy. <laughs> and then and then like, you know, I learned like you don't have to call by Usher. I was like, oh yeah, this is like you know, I know uh, Usher. They got a routine that you don't have to call. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if I, <laughs> <laughs> I have to cut this stuff out later or whatever. <laughs> that sounds so fun. But yeah. it was so fun. So yeah. fun. And then it was like, Robot Remains. I'm like, ah, oh, I love to I know this one. I love but, to but I'm like, I forgot it though. <laughs> <laughs> so then like, you know, we got one of the young dragons, you know, teaching it. And I'm sitting in, I'm standing in the back. Yeah. And he looks over, he's like, Hey, bro, you should be teaching this. I'm like, bro, I actually forgot this. So, <laughs> like, help me, remind me what this is. Oh, yeah. And then as we're learning, and then, like, oh, shoot. And the muscle memory starts kicking back. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I remember this part. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then we break up into groups. And then we, like, all right, are we going to do group one, group two, da, 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 da. And then I, I do it. I'm just like, I was like, whoa. I'm just having so much fun. I was like, wow, this is hella fun. And after the groups were done, there's this weird moment where the whole group, the whole room was just kind of silent and just like looking at me. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then like, you know, one of the young dragons was like, yo, man, all y'all look tired. But like, why does this guy look like he has the most energy in the room right now? Yeah. And I was like, and literally I wanted to cry, bro. I Aww. wanted to cry. Because I just like, I never felt like, fuck, now I'm going to cry. Oh, yo. You ain't a man if you ain't crying right now, dude. Just cry. It's history, man. It's history. And it creeps back up on you. Hey, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Chad. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah, I'm going to let that breathe for a second. Um, the robot remains. <laughs> and even that, like, even just like... <laughs> robot remains like you know man there's so much stuff that i'm just like man bro we've all been through cycles of stuff yeah you know what i'm saying man. and like cycles they they, they start and they they kind of like hit their difficult spots and they revamp and they, yeah. they re they recirculate 100 and like what i felt in that moment like I'm, dude i don't know what this is other than i was supposed to just experience that moment of just like relive what you did and then i was like i'm like literally watching the new generation like this is a well-oiled machine this is what we had talked about from the very beginning yeah. what if we did this yeah. what would happen we might be able to recreate and like da -da -da -da. and i was like a wallflower in this rehearsal and i was just like this is the dream that we had talked about for years and years. And I'm seeing it right now. This was like Jabberwockies, the dance company. Yeah. Not Jabberwockies, the crew. The Jabberwockies, yeah, yeah. the crew is a whole different story. For sure, for I know sure. what that's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, this is a whole different story. I'm like, wow, I am proud. And then I had them, they're like, they call me out and I do my thing. They're like, Pfft. they're like, and the, literally the chant out was like triple OG on three. They like, Ben, lead us out the chant. I'm like, what? They're like, lead us out. Hear it, man. They're like, lead us out. Triple OG on three. I'm like, uh, one, two, three. Triple OG on three. I'm like, and and I didn't even feel like it was like, I'm the old guy. I'm the like, okay, da 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 da. But like, literally, people giving me my flowers and things like that. And I was like, you know what? I'll just accept it and I'll receive it and I'll just say thank you. But I just want to be like, dude, I want to extend that love right back out to y'all yeah. because this is, this is the future. Y'all are the future. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I feel like, and that's like the 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 undertone to all this OG talk is now this OG talk that we're receiving is I, I'm realizing whether it's us receiving it at like events now and and people giving us that um, and honestly I have to just like kind of stop and although we have this feeling of like sometimes imposter syndrome if like a, a Wiggles is there <laughs> but um, but also. Uh, acknowledging beyond that that it like there's gratitude to be felt yeah. to even you know i want to be grateful that like oh shoot we put enough time in where someone is even curious to ask us because i i'm well aware that they don't have to ask us in nowadays age like you know i think a lot of people might even assume like i could just learn everything from the internet you know what i mean so like i'm i just want to be grateful for that you know what i mean like oh you want to ask cool but if you're curious here's the open book you know mm. what i mean and i and i think that on that note of even with like with jabba uh in general i think this 
notion of full circle is like the bigger note that I'm still yeah. like kind of like yeah. getting more of my feet crept yep. into, which is like, you know, I think as we get older and the life variables change. And I think when you're 20, you're like in your 20s, you're kind of just like, I'm going to iron fist my way through everything. And you do. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like in your 30s, you're like, OK, I put so much work in that I'm I and I'm also in this flow of like, I'm going to adjust to surroundings while still still using that iron hammer that I carved out in my 20s. But I I also want to adjust to my surroundings and service my my surroundings. And I feel like that's what it's become like, oh, now I'm stepping into this role. Uh, let me be really good at this then. <laughs> let me let me let me just share a lot. Let me whether it's at camps or events, whether it's with a company and straight up like our most recent uh, Kinjas project, we did this Troy Boy music video, right? Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. for context for everybody. So uh, Jackson Wang, uh, shout out Jackson. He f fucking reps Kinjas so hard. We love Jackson. And straight up. And Anthony, Carlo, Bam, Ving, rep the squad and they, they crushed it at Coachella these past two weekends. And the reason I bring that up is that while they were crushing it, uh, Troy Boy reached out to us and he was like, yo, long story short, I have this new track out with Mr. Carmack. I think y'all would be, it would be lit to have y'all make a music video for this, right? Or an official dance video for it. So we're talking it up and we're like, okay, cool. And so through that, we're like, all right, we've been in the flow and that was one of our first videos where like a majority of that lineup was like some of like our young gen, you know what I mean? And I feel like through that and for me, Joza was on that video too. And Joe's, me and Joza, we've been talking after rehearsals and it was like this feeling of, and again, letting them fly too, right? Just being like, yo, y'all are, y'all are Lonnie Walkering it up right now. Y'all are freaking Jordan Poole in last year's playoffs. <laughs> 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 right like y'all are really really all would like gotta let you fly you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so i think in that same way i'm uh you know if i were to be brutally honest like jabba i think they're settling into that right now right mm -hmm. whereas for us we are stepping into that right now and i think this is just age this is just you know what i mean jabba Ben included is technically our seniors. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? And I think that now for us, as we enter this stage of life on this OG tip, it's also like, yo, like take take the reins. We'll be here to guide it. And that is what we're gonna be best at. You know what I mean? And we're still sharpen our swords. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 honestly, just entertain the, the type of curiosity we want to on this journey. <clears throat> but I think we are at a moment where it's fun to see that, see them fly, see Kev Nierva, who's not squad, but yet. yet. <laughs> hey. no, I was kidding, Chad, cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, but, yes. but, but to, to suddenly look at the whole track and just be like, you know, I could choreograph to this to fill that space, or I could, I'm looking at Kev, I'm like, if I just look at what I think is the best product and not, oh, but like he's not squad and, and, and think that it's just like, if there's that or straight up like, yo, I honestly think he's going to make something fire. Let's let mm. him fly and mm -hmm. this is going to be mm -hmm. a better balanced video. And yo, and I think through those experiences, fast forward, uh, I don't know when this episode is going to be released, but our performance at Good Times, formerly Urban Paradise, this is this is going to be our first ever Kinja's performance that is not that doesn't have me or Anthony's hand on it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. this is going to be straight up uh, Nick and J Nick Joseph, Jason Lin leading the charge on this performance specifically. Let's go. And so this is, um, you know, this is us handing off the reins. In some sense, it's also a guinea pig test. They better kill it. You better pass that <laughs> test. No pressure, but they do have to smash. <laughs> they you better really pass do. Pass this test. Um, and of course, awesome. we're supporting, right? And, and there is this back end. Like we're having calls with John Shee, and there's the support. But at the end of the day, like, 
you you hand off you hand off the reins and you're like mm. yo this is mm. this is that moment and it's and it's on us to support and then i think the extra level for us is like how do we want to continue to grow in in the path that is most correct for us and not trying to force mm. it against the current mm -hmm. but understand the current and be like all right where does my journey really really flow with this current and so that i can keep pushing and not just flow mm. as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking it back to well, all encompassing, but we talk about like full circle and stuff, and even taking it back to like your Korea trip, uh, it got me thinking about. I think it's been like twenty years since your first time that you won a dance competition in high school or whatever oh, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you got yeah, flown yeah. out to Korea. It's been like twenty years, right? Yeah, that was two thousand three. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, you got a good memory. Yeah, 20, wow, that yeah, was twenty years. And I met you, and I oh my god, this is you want to know how full circle that is? Let's go. Uh, Finish your thought. Um, you, no, 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 one no, 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 go, 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 Conti. So Anthony, bless his memory. In 2003, in K-Town, I entered this uh, con dance contest. I actually entered it with like my high school crew and they all bailed on me the night uh, before. This is up tempo? Yeah. Uh, they, 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 uh, yeah. I'm not trying to call them out. They hella bailed, dude. <laughs> what kind of loyal they friends are you? What are their ads, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro? <laughs> Give us their ads. But they did, they did. Uh, the night before, they all said they couldn't do it. And so... Um, I ended up like doing a solo instead. I entered as a group and I did a solo at Radio Korea's dance contest. Yes. And at Radio Korea's dance contest, the prize was a flight ticket to Korea. <laughs> and that would be my first trip to Korea as a, as a semi-adult. And at Radio Korea, Ben was <laughs> dancing with Yoo Seung Joon and Ben... <laughs> Being one of my, like, I had very few interactions with him, like a dance idol. I got to speak with Ben at that event in 03. Continue. But full circle. Everything's so interconnected, man. Yeah, I mean, we're just talking about, like, you know, time in the game. So it's like, even with you talking about going to Street Man Fighter or whatever imposter syndrome concepts we may, may have, it's like... You're like 19, 20 years later back in Korea, but now not like a winner of a competition in your pre-adult years, but like as a judge who's being recognized by like a lot of the, maybe some of those competitors who are on the show started dancing after like seeing some of your videos or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that's like the truth of the story for some people. So I feel like when we were, when we were thinking like what makes an OG, like there must be a million different ways that you can describe it, but I, I might add to the pot of definitions like, if you've been in the game long enough for somebody's entire existence and maybe they started because of you or something like that, that might be pretty solid qualifications for being at least recognized in that category. Mm. You know, respectfully speaking, you know, like 20 years is literally how old some of the kids who are killed, they're not even kids, 20 year an adult. 20 years is like how old some of the people who are like the game changers right now. Mm -hmm. And that's like how long, you know, you might have been in the game just existing yeah. and still killing it, still going back and being a part of these things. So, I mean, like, it's just, it's an accomplishment. I, I, I just want to recognize why it should be considered a high, you know what I mean, as an experience mm -hmm. for you. I appreciate that, man. Such, but such but to life, take man. it back, though, like, what are yeah. other highs? And then <laughs> when are we going to get to some of the lows of last year oh, for you, man. you know? Um, okay, so yeah, uh, Korea connections, I all sorts of um, epiphanies, realizations, full life cycle moments. Yeah, yeah, bro. Um, but the the highest high of last year was definitely um, when and the highest low. It, it was compacted into all in in one. You said week. the highest low. That's cool. I like how you phrase that. Oh shit! You said hey, the oh, low. Let's just pause. Let's refuck. Let's like feed this motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Cheers. I think you start hearing my voice. And He's like, Dad, I'm hungry. You were asking about like what is another high. Mm. Um, oh, and, and yeah, I was yeah, about yeah. to go into it, but you said you said my my something about like my my high low or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to actually pause for a second, okay? I want to pause, go back to the old <laughs> the one I, the thing I just mentioned because uh, I want to also just like touch on this thing. We never get. To, I don't know if you guys have ever talked about it on the pod, but even just like uh, whether it's street dance of China or hot blood dance in mm -hmm. in China, I think it's it's really 
something interesting is that like Anthony went on to be a a, a behind the scenes choreographer and I on those shows. Uh, all, uh, or yeah, pretty much both. Hot Blood for sure. Street Dance through the Kinders performance, and also obviously we're connected through John Hawes. Uh, and you're like whether it's just moral support through Franklin, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just as a homie straight up. But um, through all those experiences, I think I, I just want to kind of note one more thing on that o OG tip that um, I don't even know if it's an OG tip, but I think there's something very, uh, we're unraveling it right now, this Asian American experience. And as we're in Asian American you know, AAPI oh, we are Heritage AAPI Month AAPI right now. Heritage month. Yes, I think, are. you know, some of the things to, you know, when else are we going to have the time to remind ourselves like, hey, there are certain like landmark mm. milestone moments and also moments to reflect on and delve deeper on. And I do think that it's quite interesting that we we grew up in a, with American culture, this mixed Asian American experience that you know, there's we're only now are we through different types of shows and movies, barely scratching the surface on, right? Um, but it's there's something very interesting about us having this this mixed culture growing up uh, experience, and then this polarized experience, but then now in our adulthood, consuming this American culture mixed with our own background, and then getting summoned by our our mother countries, right? Hmm. Anthony working in China, I'm working in Korea. And I think this experience where it's like Amer our American experience has a plays a role in what we do to bring us back. Mm. But the way in which we connect with that culture and our upbringing, our upbringing has such a pivotal role in the way we connect with that culture. And I think there's just something to be said for... Um, like how you were bringing up even earlier, Ben, about like with Jabba and you don't know these full circle moments that really hit you hard because as you go through these cycles of life, uh, you don't know that all these like packed experiences that might not have been viewed as you didn't even know the value of it. There's hardships that come from it. Mm -hmm. There's just life, right? Culturally, <laughs> right? And then you're like, man, I'm I'm so glad to be korean american and mm. to have that experience i'm so glad to be chinese vietnamese american i'm so glad to have those experiences and now it's equipping me it's like that slumdog millionaire moment mm. when you have those difficulties mm. in your life <laughs> those challenges yep. and it's just going thing i know the answer i know the answer and i only uniquely know that through through some of the shit that i've been through right and so i think um yeah, I just kind of wanted to point that out. It's not even just my experiences. I think we're all going through nah, these shared that. experiences yeah. of of life cycles and things from you, your upbringing that that come into fruition. And as long as you keep pushing along and you don't dwell, I don't even want to say you don't dwell. You just keep pushing along. You never know. You never yeah. know yeah. Uh, how how that your experience could be helpful to someone else. No, I love that, man. I mean. <clears throat> I think like a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, because even before we start rolling, like what should we talk about? What should we not talk about? And then we're just like, F it, let's just talk about whatever we're supposed to talk about. And I think that's what we're doing. And, um, you know, uh, it's been a difficult time for literally every single person on the globe. Um, but let's just like hone it into what we're talking about here, Kinjas, right? Um, like how has the pandemic affected us? And we've we've already, we have we've actually already like talked about a lot of that stuff, um, but the last time you were on the pod, there was some real life stuff that happened to you that you're yeah. like, I don't really want to make it about that. We're like, cool, we don't need to, we don't need to talk about that. And and just for the sake of like, let's just be transparent for like the 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 our listeners and stuff. And we're like, okay, cool. We're like, what's just happened with Mike? And let's just like, yo, what's he been up to? Project and things like that. And you said you wanted to be like, hey, I remember last time I didn't really want to talk about what happened with my dad. And 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 like, you know, in my mind, I don't want to even be like, oh, but so many people are wondering. I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm wondering. Yeah, for sure. For sure for we've sure, had sure. our private talks, sure, which is sure, great. Sure, and I sure. love it. But like, bro, your dad literally is a miracle, bro. <laughs> Let's just start it with that. It's literally a miracle. <laughs> and then who's whoever's tuning in is yeah. like, what the hell does that mean? 
I'm gonna let you tell us why that's a miracle. Because and 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 at that time you didn't want to talk about it because you know like I don't want to like like glorify this as a story for the yeah. sake of it. But you said before we even started rolling, like, you know what? Actually, I think I'm down to talk about my dad. So yeah, I yeah, just want to yeah, like kind of sure. open that up. For sure, yeah. Let's yeah. address it. Um, let me just like for a moment um, correct the timeline though. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't say that on my last pod because my last pod was before anything with my dad even happened. Mm -hmm. You guys actually, for anyone listening asked me to do a pod again after mm -hmm. the whole yeah, incident yeah, yeah, with my did, dad. And I'll yeah. give context about what yeah. happened with my dad if if anyone listening is not aware. Um, but it, was, it wasn't it was on the last pod that I did with you guys. It was actually, you guys asked me to do an, a, another episode after um, that happened with my dad. And I wasn't in a place where I wanted to talk about that and share. It was, um, it was very layered. But um, yeah, just before I, I filmed this episode, they, you know, the guys obviously uh, re respected um, just how I feel and what I want to share. But going on to this pod, I was kind of just internalizing, like, wh why the heck am I even going to be talking on this pad? Like, what do I want to share? You know, honestly, I'd be listening to like a uh, majority of the episodes, right? Uh, on drives and catching up and i'm like yo i'm getting the full spectrum of like i'm super inspired or i'm very I, i'm touched by the realness uh the the transparency that i feel from some of the homies some of the people that i don't know the journey and i'm getting this full spectrum of emo uh experiences so i, I kind of really just came onto this pod and i wanted to set an intention and my intention really is just to to hopefully share anything without without forcing any ideology either because i'm just like hey everyone's just on their path i don't want to be like yo here's how you should succeed <laughs> mm -hmm. or here's you know what you know here's my what i do in my daily whatever i'm kind of just like i i'll just share my experiences and hopefully that can um that can be helpful to anyone listening um and so yeah uh, it made me come to the conclusion where i'm like yeah last year you guys asked me right after the incident with my dad uh, if I would come on and I didn't want to talk about it, but now I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm down to share a bit about that experience because, uh, yeah, man, that was life changing. So now I'll get to it for anyone who doesn't know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Cause that was probably like a really long, uh, uh, pro what, pretext for it, but yeah. Um, here's some context or just explanation for what happened last year. Uh, I believe this is the last week of February. Her second to last week of February of 2022, um, I my dad went missing uh, in the mountains. If you live in LA, um, you know that um, there was a random day where it snowed in LA, and it, in the the perhaps the most western parts of LA, uh, it hailed. But if you were in Pasadena, if you got closer to the mountains, there was actually snow and it was like a, a crazy day. And my, my dad's an avid hiker. And my mom told me that uh, my dad didn't come home that night. And when she called me at uh, around 1030 PM, um, I, I was a bit concerned because I knew it snowed that day and my dad was in the mountains. And so um, instantly this began the rabbit hole of like, okay, told my mom like, okay, let's try and figure this out call me back in like an hour if he's still not home and um yeah it, this went on throughout the entire night and once once it was like you know 2 3 a.m and he wasn't home and i knew that it snowed i it, you know it it was obvious that something had happened right um because I, I know that there must have been a snowstorm in the mountains if there's a if there's snow in la then um yeah i, I was aware how that would affect all the hiking trails so I, I drove back home uh, to my parents' house to be with my mom. I, uh, we filed like a missing uh, police report. Woo! I'm like going back there now. I haven't really thought about it in, in, since February of this year, actually, because we did like a one-year anniversary with my family about this, mm. which I'll get to. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, we, we go back. I go back home to miss, uh, file a missing persons report. Uh, you know, I'm learning all this stuff about what it's like to file that. Um, you know, one <laughs> ironic story that I'll share is that, uh, you know, uh, we, we're not sure which city to file this in, but we start with, um, you know, my hometown, uh, which I won't mention for a second. You'll, you'll hear why, 
but I'm sure you can piece it together. <laughs> um, but when we call like a, a missing persons report and the police show up at my parents' house, it's like a movie. I open the door and it's like a classmate from high school. <laughs> And yeah. we're both, we're both wow. kind of looking at each other a little bit taken aback. Wow. Right? That's and this crazy. isn't someone I was close with. And, uh, you know, no disrespect to him at all. But just from my high school experience, <laughs> this is like not the person I expected <laughs> yeah. or requested to be the authority oh that is gosh. like the brain right, to figure right, right, a solution right. out. To like find your father. To find my missing father. This was like father. not the captain of the football team, ASB president, <laughs> anything like that, right? Like this dude who sat yeah. like in the third row in the second yeah, seat. Yeah, like this is the guy that has a notepad. I'm giving him details about That's like the last known whereabouts cool. of my dad and i'm like yo i definitely did better than you in school <laughs> like for <laughs> sure bro and i'm just and a lot can change but just you know <laughs> the feeling of like wow this could not be any more ironic you right, know what i right, mean right, right, right. um I it. so it's <laughs> that's how it starts yeah, that's great. the journey starts there <laughs> Um, ironic's a nice word you're probably worried as fuck yeah <laughs> like, oh fuck yeah you're not gonna be <laughs> yeah i was i mean yeah like things going through my head it really just turned into i feel like when you go into crisis mode and i think honestly i was thinking about this a lot i thank god for like like being a a, a business owner that's been tested by things like the mm. pandemic where i feel like it's through a lot of those types of experiences that the crisis mode i felt more equipped real talk to mm -hmm. to kind of just go into like s solutions mode versus mm -hmm. waste time on the abyss of of bad possibilities and just panic you know so uh, really it just turned on like solve 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 like that's it you know what i mean and so yeah, we ended up um if i were to like kind of fast forward in the story a bit um we we ended up getting in contact with the police department from um kern county uh which is where uh, my dad was hiking um and that was like uh I, I fell asleep that night and then the the next morning i fell asleep for like an hour right i was just on the couch making calls trying to figure this out and then um uh like an hour later uh i called back the person the contact i was given and they they found his car um, it was the lone car at uh, Mount Pinos, which is actually located directly between Kern County and Ventura, uh, which made this even jurisdiction wise, like an, uh, a bit more complicated um, to find a missing person and, and activate a, a search. And so um, that's like a relief, but also a it was like relief, like, oh, we know where he is, but also damn he is in the mountains mm. he's not <laughs> anywhere else you know i would rather him be <laughs> just drunk chilling, somewhere chilling or you know yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. you yeah, know yeah. casino or something yeah. i'd rather have that than like you know it's like coupled with like he he's in the mountains like his car is still there like he spent a night cold Hmm. um and so yeah the hunt began and so my whole family obviously we start going into this this search mode um and if i were to uh man there's so many details i could like harp on but like the the most important thing i want to share about this is that um there was a point in time where um you know we it, when we got to the second night and it was getting closer to sundown. Um, and we we just knew that we had to put more pressure on the, the police departments. Um, and they, they said they weren't going to um, send out uh, helicopters, right? They said they'll wait till the next day to um, find my dad. And I was like, yo, first night maybe. And my dad's an avid hiker, you know? So I knew he had skill. He's also military trained, which ended up being, you know, <laughs> what? This became a happy ending mm -hmm. for anyone that doesn't know there, there's a happy ending to all this but you know my dad's he's turning 75 this year right he's he 74 when this all happened and so or spoiler alert papa song's a freaking g bro yeah. just gonna uh, put that out there so you 
Um, I didn't know. You just don't know what's gonna happen for a second night, right? So, um, yeah, when you're kind of like pushed to desperation, um, it just turned into like, yo, what if we turn to social media and just like try and blast this up and, and via social media and get it onto news stations that pressuring a police department to put direct more resources towards this right um and yeah that was after weighing like all our options that was like the only one with my family it's basically me and my sister uh who were really just gaming this out um and i was like yeah let's do it and so yeah you'd never think that you'd be playing for <laughs> you know just the most vulnerable state in your most vulnerable state opening that up like super publicly i think is something that you never think you'd ever be in that situation one um and two you it's one of those things where like you you get it but you're like also at the same time you don't give a flying fuck but you do mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't you know what i mean you're like damn this is freaking uh embarrassing you know i don't want to share this but like what the hell is more important than like trying to like find my dad so um yeah we put it out there uh, and i'm just like flustered in my kitchen recording this video <laughs> you know what i mean writing a, a message on social media and um i think through that that that's the main thing i wanted to share even as i, I speak with you and my decision to even kind of like talk about this is um i think there's this running theme that I feel and clearly all of like the other guests on the Kinja's podcast feel about and just all our peers, right? Social media is this double edged sword mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> of like, uh, we're all trying to spend less time on it. We're downloading apps to keep us away <laughs> from social media, but we're connected to it via work and there's the pros and cons and there's all these conversations. And I still admittedly, I'm trying to stay away from social media as much as I can. However, um through through this i i really was shown the the power of social media um and we're reminded that like yo uh again and I, I always say i'll be eternally grateful to anyone listening if you shared my post um like shit that oh dude i'm about to start tearing up right now <sighs> <laughs> and that came quick. I, I thought that like I would not be emotional at all talking about this because, you know, I've uh, I've already had so much time to think about this and reflect on this and think about this in a lot of different ways. But um, uh, I think the thing that like cracked <sighs> the thing that cracked the shell for me, uh, and by shell I mean. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't giving myself time to, to panic because I was like, uh, I gotta solve this. Um, so I was actually pretty. I felt like a robot. I felt like fucking Terminator. I was like, I'm gonna fucking solve this. I'm gonna do my best um, to find my dad. <sighs> but um, when I shared that, like, I'm not thinking about this shit. Right, I'm, or I'm not thinking about like how many shares it's gonna get. I'm just like, I have an objective. I need to get to news media, right? But so I share that. I don't think about it, and uh, I'm back to it. Like phone calls with the police department, and uh, you know, I don't remember how. However, longer it was, hour later, a couple hours later, that I go back into social media, and I just see like, it's my whole timeline. Love you, Mike. Hey, love you guys too, man. This is like, it, it, yeah. Even right now, when I talk about it, I feel like my brain is is like in a is in a really good space about this. It has a happy ending, but it's actually just like it. You're not ready to receive that outpouring of love at like such a uh, 
low point in your journey. Ah. Hey. hey, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, so that, seeing that, and then uh, that breaking me, you know, in that moment, in that quick moment, because I still was like, no, nah, fuck it. <laughs> Whatever voice in my head was like, back to Terminator mode, <laughs> stay focused. Um, but it did break me for a moment when I saw how many people shared it. And furthermore, it wasn't just the shares, it was the shares that led to the result. Mm. Suddenly, I'm getting... Not just in my DMs. I'm getting just texts instantly. Um, and so I'm getting hit up by news stations. We hear about it. It's my friends. A lot of friends who I haven't even spoke to in years. Um, who have like a connect. That are connecting me to news stations. Um, and it was. So then now it just feels like this complex operation where it's not just the police. Now I'm doing news interviews in my kitchen. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, you're just in this vulnerable state, right? Because you don't you know. We've done other stuff for the news before. And, you know, when you're like, oh, we're going to be on TV. You have this like <laughs> autopilot thing. Yeah, like, I'm going to yeah. prep for this. I'm going to yeah. look good. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. But this is just like the most like, I'm going to uh, fucking wash my, douse my face with water. And I don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> I'm going to just make sure I'm fucking saying clear information on this interview. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think, uh, yeah, getting connected with news. And then I think another layer was the the hiking community. That was like a real game changer of my perspective on, again, on the social media topic of, you, you know, I feel like sometimes we, we look at social media and we think about all the people who spend their time on social media and influencers and imagery and all these things that might have a, a negative context. But what you don't think about is people that are also not on social media all the time, <laughs> but they kind of use it in, in, a, in a way to just connect. And it somehow was able to reach all the hiking community. Shout out Pine Mountain Club. Who, who ended up reaching out. And they're like, oh, we just heard about it. Someone posted on Bulletin uh, via IG. And I'm just on these late night calls where um, on the second night, uh, the, the police ended up saying, we are going to use our resources to do a helicopter search, but they didn't do it until the morning of the third day. So on the second night when I, when I was concerned, my uh, the Pine Mountain Club ended up reaching out and being like, hey, we're actually going to send out some people in the night. Uh, and and the police said, we don't want it because it's too dangerous, right? Again, more context, like literally there was a snowstorm. And so what the police told me is that they don't want to go in and search at night. The danger is too high because they don't know if they're going to be, their words exactly is, um, or I'm paraphrasing, but what they were telling me is, that you could technically walk off a cliff and not know because right. so much so is all, yeah. all the yeah. snow yeah. Ha, yeah. has basically dismembered everything, right? And so, and then suddenly they're doing like two missing persons. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right, right, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, for, sure, for sure. And so, um, but to know that the Pine Mountain Club, you know, you got these heroes, that, and I get it. I'm not putting anything on the police department because they have to, uh, you know, they don't want to create more risk, right? Um, Whereas Pine Mountain Club, though, you I'm opened up to this community of like experts and specialists who are like, I'm hiking there right now. I'm the, I know this. I don't need a map to know this mountain. I can we can find this right. And so I'm just on these Best late time. night calls <laughs> where they're like, you know, and there's no reception there clearly. So they're like, we can, um, we have our own little satellite trackers, and what we can do is like track trails and and hunt through the night and if we don't find them oh, find them great if we don't find them we can show the police in the morning where we've searched for your dad and so um yeah again i have to give it up to pine mountain club for just being on these calls with me also uh jet justin bias for his his hiking uh community as well mm. he hit me up and people for, i was on calls with them as well and, and they were like, yo, asking me questions, trying to help out. 
Yo, uh, Lee J's homie also. Hold on, I need to. Oh, the homie who drove up from yes. San Diego yeah, with yeah. his dog. You know, I'm gonna pull up his name right now because again, you know, yeah, time goes by. Yeah, this guy and you lose touch. I haven't bro. even spoken with him uh, in in a year. I, I should text him today, <laughs> straight up to just be like, "Thank yeah, you, man." Bro. Um, okay, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna find this in a bit. I have to, but it's it's his homie who, uh, basically, shout out Lee J. Lee J texts me about this and he's like, one of my buddies is like a stud, a hiking <laughs> stud. This guy drives in the middle of the night from San Diego with his two Huskies. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it myself with my Huskies. <laughs> and he's searching in the middle of the night and I'm texting with him as well. So it's just, my point is with all this stuff is that you forget that there's these, these people that exist that will at the drop of a dime when they know they have the skills to help, yeah. will go out of their way to ridiculous miles yeah. to, to help you. Um, and that, I think, was just super inspiring, a reminder of like, yo, it's not about staying on social media and what you see on social media, but there is it is a tool. Mm. So at least being connected is, is something that will always be, um, uh, always be thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that that just uh just gives me a thought towards like um and you can even keep searching for the homie's name if you want to shout him yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh I I just feel like you know the past few years has done a really good job of making social media this like villain. Right? Like yeah. oh, all this negativity like all we see is like People getting beat up on these streets, like, you know, wars and bombings and violence and like all the like death toll and yada, yada, yada. Or mental issues and creating pressures and and like, you know, different identity concepts and all that as well. All of that. So I don't know. I'll just speak for myself. I don't want to speak for anybody else. The past few years made me feel like, oh, social media is the freaking devil. It is like the enemy. You don't want to be on that. You should just be off of it. And but you just said social media in this particular situation was your tool. Yeah. Like you just posted the SOS and people came running. Like from all over the place. People came running, like, yo, how can I help? And so what that makes me feel like it's actually neutral. Social media is literally neutral, meaning it's not good or it's not bad, but it can be good and it can be bad. It is both. It's it's both. A, yeah, it's a tool. It's literally both. It's and, a hammer. You know what I mean? Like you could pick it up and build something. Or you could pick it up and kill someone. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's just really yeah. how you use it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely that. And and so like, I just I, you're you're taking me back to that that season when when this is happening. Like I remember distinctly. Like when I when I got your text messages, I was in a meeting with a a good friend of both of ours, and I was like. Hey, I just got a text from Mike, uh, and this is what the text is. Literally, that stopped us both in our tracks about what our meeting was about. And we literally were like, I'm going into Google mode. I'm going into Google mode. I'm trying to figure. And we we stayed on FaceTime, and she wouldn't even care. April, shout out April. I was on a, a meeting with April, and we literally halted what we were like meeting for for work, and we are like, we need to figure out how we can help Mike out. And we literally stayed on FaceTime for like two hours in silence. Cause we're like, Hey, I found like a map. And it's like, Oh, I think I found a map too. And like, it was like the entire community halted because like, it was like our brother needs, needs help. And we have the ability to help because we have social media reach. Like, okay, I'm going to reach out to my family. I'm going to post this on my story. I'm going to post this on my feed. Da, 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 da. And then like like the next morning we saw it on the news. We're like, because we were tagging ABC News. Like, y'all need to freaking figure this out. Like, why are, you guys, why are you guys not paying attention to this? And because of all that effort within like not even 24, it was like probably within like 12 hours, yeah. it was on the news. And I was like, yes, God, like, please, let, let's get this thing figured out. And then when you... Hit us with the news. I I know I'm jumping forward now, yeah. but like I I want you to like you know walk us through like the the resolve because there is a happy ending to this. Yeah. There is a happy ending to this. Yeah. But like I'm telling you that that moment of crisis when you were talking about like man like social media da 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 
but it, you used it as a tool and then your whole entire crew of community just came running at you like what can i do and not even like we need like mike tell me what to do we're just like okay mike's not responding i'm gonna figure out what i can do yeah. Dude, i'm gonna look it up this is a life-changing event there's only three events the whole fucking life all right that you remember exactly where you are what you're doing Fucking when 9-11 happened, yep, when I Michael remember. Jackson died, I remember that. and when Mike's dad went missing. Damn, I remember all, right? all three of those very vividly. I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> very vividly. I was in the oh middle. Oh my gosh. I was in the middle of fucking filming for JK News. <laughs> Bro, we was mid-video. We we're probably at like the the like tail end of the video. And this is one of those random videos that started just going longer than it needed to. But I remember right when I got the text, everything about me, like, like the video, even though the video was still on. I went off of the video. <laughs> now, I started tearing up actually because yeah, 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 I, yeah. I didn't know what to do, yeah. right? And I remember even Ryan, Ryan and me was sitting across and he like looked at me and he like knew something was up, yeah. but the context of what we were talking about in the video was serious. So he thought I was just being tearing, tearing up about what, you guys what was talking, talking about, about in the video. <laughs> so when finally the video ends, he's like, yo, and you all right, man? Like, you know, and I was like, and I'm looking at all these guys, but I I didn't know how to disclose this. But at yeah, the same time, like you know, these are my boys too, you know. Right. So I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I I just got this text from Mike. Yeah. I gotta bounce. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. He right. didn't tell me right, to right, do right, something, right, but right, it was right, like right. same thing. I was like, I'm not gonna fucking film more just kidding news videos with this thing in the back of my head right, and right, right. heavy on my heart. So I was like, I gotta bounce. Mm -hmm. I ended up bouncing. I talked to him real quick. I knew that I was going to eventually like go up to the mountain the next day. So I bounce and I go home. I'm going to Target. I'm getting random ass supplies. I'm getting fucking like survival kits, first aid stuff, flashlights, <laughs> headlights. Well, that was the next day. <laughs> Technically, you didn't know until the next day then. All I remember is that night I started found, making. Because you found out and then it was the next day that I asked you to go the next day. I just remember making a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> That was the that was the day after. That was the day after. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's on accurate. The first day, and then on the second night when we went the third day, okay, is when I was like, right because when yeah. you texted, it was in yeah. the evening. I was on yeah. a, I was on an evening call with April, and I was like, I just got a text from Mike. Yeah. This is what he just. Oh said. yeah, you guys. Oh yeah, I texted Ben and I all in the same group text because I basically had to postpone a meeting. Yeah, and I was just oh. like, Hey y'all, uh, I don't even remember what I said, but I I tried to keep it brief. You kept it but very yeah, brief. Yeah, and I was like, my dad's, <laughs> it must have been a crazy text again. My dad's missing. I got to handle this. Let's postpone our meeting. <laughs> yeah, it was yes. wild. I just yes. I just remember bouncing with JK, and I guess the next day I was making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> That's all I remember. You know what I'm saying? What the freak? Um, but it was crazy because, you know, from, from my perspective, I remember just driving up the mountain with Mike. And, uh, you know, when you're when you're getting this, like, objective information like when you're objectively thinking about it you're like you're like two nights in day three 70 plus years old like when you're looking at the objective percentage odds mm. like yeah. you know you don't want to say it yeah but it's not good no. it's not you know what i mean yeah. and like when you're hearing like as time passes, the likeliness of this is like worse and worse. But again, you don't want to say it. <laughs> it's just getting worse. And I'm just like looking at the homie and this fool, is, he's, he said for, he's like in Terminator mode. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you don't get a moment to think about what's going on because the emotions are either going to take over or you're going to be in control and just do everything you can. And this guy literally went into fucking Terminator mode. And because he was in Terminator mode, I wasn't allowed to like think about things like objectively. It was just keep going. Right, right, right. It was the most insane fucking feeling because like you're also at like if the worst happens and again, you know, it was a happy ending. So I think it's like now an ability to reflect on it. Mm -hmm. But if the worst case scenario happens, you're also like, I've never been trained or equipped to <laughs> console a brother yeah. on something so dramatically like terrible. Mm -hmm. Not equipped. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it, you're just, I, it was the most intense feeling ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like ever. I don't even know how to describe it. There's no words, but you're just like, I'm, I don't know what to do next. So let's just keep fighting. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. the other option is just tragic. And it was the fucking most intense thing. Mm. 
But we still had hella peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> Just in case. I fucking ate like three that hungry. day. We I got ate three PB that and day. PB&Js on deck. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you, I'll start painting in more, more of the rest of the story. So on Ant's note, we kind of fast forward a bit. Uh, oh, and I found the name. Actually, I want to shout out Paul Ganolin from San Diego. Let's go, Paul. This is the homie from Lee J. Uh, that I still have it. I can pull up the text. Uh, I'm showing you all right now. Wow. He he drew out the tracks. Turn to the camera. Yeah, what or, or, the if you can freak? see, he drew out the tracks of where on Mount Pinos that he he searched for, so that he can give it um, to the police. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, and so, yeah, man, like shout out. He he drove out in the middle of the night and he went by himself when the cops said like, That's we crazy, can't risk anyone bro. like the danger. Basically, they said it's too dangerous. And so, wow. and he went by himself. That's and his two crazy, huskies. bro. And so. He's like a gangster firefighter or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, fast forward, uh, you know, it's the second night um, when that's all happening. Um, as basically throughout the whole second night, they don't find my dad. That's when your brain starts going into like, oh, um, you know, if this this kind of goes the other way. We don't find my dad, or we do find my dad, and you know, we 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 find his body, um, or we don't even find his body. Right? There's all these possibilities. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty indescribable, like what you start prepping yourself for. You know, and then also kind of like, um, in I feel like you also start internalizing this, like, oh shoot, I am, I could possibly now be the man of my family now. You know, mm. you start kind of going there. I remember my family. I hugged my my mom and my sister as we we left in the morning, on the third day to go find my dad. It was like a the vibe of that hug we'll never forget it we all we still talk about it it was like uh so much said with just a hug you know mm. it, it just felt like is this another chapter of life um so uh <laughs> i know it's heavy stuff but um we so many of the homies, Ben included, Chad, everybody, especially like the Kinja's group me is going off. Like, we're all going to go. You know, a lot of homies are like, let's go to the mountain. Like, let's all go. <laughs> but like the police is telling me like, that's not good for us. <laughs> like, right, right, it's right. going to compli uh, complicate all the logistics of the search and we need to be able to track everything. I totally understood that too. I actually was like, that's very understandable. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, like I don't want to drive up there by myself. And it's basically me and my sister who's like like we're kind of um we're, we're figuring this all out on the back end on what to do and we basically task each other like you know my dad's business still has to run and so we're like okay jerry you man the station i'll go up to like talk to the police and be at the mountain um but i'm like i don't want to drive by myself but I don't want to bring a bunch of homies The police advise not to. And I actually agree. And we're not trying to like complicate sure. things, yeah, you know? Totally. Um, and a little bit in the back of my head was like, and we, you know, I'm ready for everything in my head of like, I might, I might like find, I might get bad news, you know? And so I'm like, okay, Anthony's an Eagle Scout. <laughs> <laughs> is the most qualified out of all like, of us like if whatever role. happens like i i need someone who is still like it just so happens like my closest homies like also is skilled in this <laughs> so like so okay like oh uh, yeah like so then i hit up and like yo like can you take me up actually like i i want i need to be on my phone tech because i'm gonna lose reception at the mountain i want to be texting all the i want to be full access i need someone to drive me <laughs> <laughs> but who is gonna also like if something goes down or we need to go in i need someone who knows what the hell they're to tie doing the freaking crazy knots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah someone needs to have a level of skill someone here someone needs to know how to yeah, make peanut butter yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> and so 
yeah it, it was <laughs> oh uh, my gosh yeah it was the the going with aunt early in the morning you know shout out aunt i showed i feel like i went to aunt's place at like 3 30 in the morning or something to get there um and we go and we go it's all sorts of crazy my dad's we get there okay i want to get to the important points because i don't want to just like just ramble on um talk to news when we're there it's also interesting to talk to news because like you feel the difference of like you're kind of going through all this stuff internally and like someone from the news who's just kind of jarring and then the person after who interviews you is like takes the time to be like how are you doing are you okay to be interviewed right now you just see like okay some people you know Mm -hmm. like Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like treat that situation differently you know and you're like oh some people carry that skill wow. and care about their job yeah in a wow. certain way. that's that's good that's great um, yeah but there was this blockade and they're not letting anyone in. and uh, i got to share this another thing so there's like the paul ganelins there's the pine mountain club there's a guy I, a, a gentleman i don't even know his name but this straight out of a movie this old guy he looks like like doc from back to the future <laughs> in hiking mode that just came in from like mode. NorCal and he's like I heard about this story on the news yeah, right he, it looked like he lived from his car like he just had yeah. everything fucking in his car yeah he's like I heard about this on the news and like and you know I got my dog with me and like I could help because he's just so confident with his skill and I'm like oh my god but like the police has a blockade and like nah this guy ain't coming up here <laughs> this dude drove Bro. all the way and I'm like I'm so sorry but thank you but <laughs> But what? And I'm shocked. There's so much to take in. My dad's oh my hiking club is gosh. also at the mountain now. So I'm also talking to them, yes. right? Weren't there like two like Asian kids that are Kindred fans from like UC San, yeah. Santa Barbara or San Diego or something like that showed up too? <laughs> There's just so Bro. much like, what is it, going yeah, on? Like people came out the woodworks to really help. And it was Holy just crap. like, it was moments like that, that I'm Damn, still bro. like, I still will never uh, fully digest and understand um but uh yeah i uh i'm forever thankful to everyone that showed up and what ended up happening fast forward through just hours 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 we're just waiting 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 um and you know we get there early morning and sometime in the afternoon basically like the cop comes over uh, and he's like i want to talk to you guys and when he says i want to talk to you guys uh, and it's funny because everyone basically is uh, is just referring to Anthony like he's the son also. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just you know, brothers, brothers yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but Bunch of like, like white yeah, cops yeah, looking yeah, at yeah, us yeah, like, they're yeah, for yeah, sure yeah, brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, All the same family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, we talked to you guys. Um, and um, that was like the fateful moment of like, uh, shit, here's the news. Some news is happening, you know. And it's like, they don't have a smile on their face either so i just don't know i'm just more in the like all right all right and they basically said um you know actually like your your father has has been found and uh oh you know i feel like they set it up on purpose he made it dramatic yeah he fuck, made it over dramatic because he's he like said, are the cameras rolling well, how's the light how's the lighting <laughs> ah, that's right because he said it wasn't for the cameras it was yeah, genuinely it was just dramatic us. it was just for us and he said We've we found your father, and they just pause. Hell, a long pause. Yeah, and I was Why? like, "That sucks." What? A- yeah, and that like, pisses me off, dude. Yeah, like, like as if it's just his body. And then they were like, "Yeah, they fucking pause." And they went, "And he's alive." And we're like, <gasps> and I just was like, "Oh my god!" You know, okay. Just, that, now that you say it yeah, like that, yeah. maybe that actually was dramatic for him. Even yeah. like, he's just like, "We found him." And he's alive. Like, like even like he was in disbelief. Dude, this shit just felt like eternity, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can't believe we found your father and he's alive because he shouldn't be. Yeah. Based off of all the freaking opposition (laughs) and oh my goodness, bro. Yeah, man. Ah. All the things. uh, There was past couple days I was like trying to like talk to my dad spiritually, see if I could send him messages. I'm just imagining my dad in the mountains all cold and shit. Um, this shit was crazy though. Like once he was like, he's alive. It's like my turn from like Terminator to like T-1000. He just like went from like hella strong robot to like liquid metal. Like, oh <laughs> my goodness. Let it, out, it was crazy. Out. We were tearing up. This shit was crazy, man. Dude, that's 
freaking wild and, and it, it was it was crazy to you know eventually what ended up happening is that the police said and my dad shared later that my dad actually made his way to road by himself he found his way on the roads of mount pinos and he was waving down cars and the car that stopped for him this gangly guy <laughs> <laughs> it's like a trucker yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know no i don't think it was a trucker um I, I, oh it was for sure not a trucker it was it was a resident of mount pinos um who who stopped and was like i seen you on the news Whoa. and via him seeing my dad on the news and not think it's just some crazy dude he recognized him from from the like, social media, from people sharing it, Channel Seven News. It was like, yeah. "Oh snap! I'm wow. gonna, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna freaking pick you up, and let's get you to safety." Wow! And so, um, wow. yeah, like my dad was able to, you know, um, get brought back via via that uh, that resident in Mount Pinos. And when I reconnected with my dad, it was like. It was the craziest thing. I'll never be able to describe that interaction in words, but it was uh, it was just happiness, straight mm. up, like coming back home. Um, it's funny seeing my dad's. You know, I embrace my. It's so funny. Like I embrace the shit out of my dad, and it's just like you know, just a true Asian dad fashion. You like kind of like let's go after like three seconds. <laughs> that's, that's as much as yeah, I can yeah, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, 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 okay. It's getting too long. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, okay, 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 okay. I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, but yeah, it was definitely um, it was funny seeing like his his Korean hiking club homies, you know, because they were all waiting too, and they were they were all worried as shit. Um. And just seeing him be able to like bond with them and them all talk shit to him too, you know? Mm. <laughs> now that it's good news, yeah. you know? Like, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, from there, as we finally, you know, everything settles down, um, start to go lower down the mountain, all the influx of texts. And I, before I could even tell anyone, everyone else found out already. They are already finding out about the good news. And so out comes just the the rejoicing the the aftermath the long conversation with my dad on the drive home that was like the craziest conversation i've ever had with my dad um and then and then just chatting with my family rejoicing and then having all the thanks to give to everybody <laughs> for what we put everybody through because it's a happy ending, now we get to acknowledge like, okay, everyone helped us out like crazy. You know what I mean? Mm. Like we 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 ended up they they helped us build this success mm. essentially. Yeah. So um, just feeling that, and um, yeah, and again, I'm I'm gonna be thankful for forever. But to anyone who's listening, if you shared a thing, that eh, just that simple share, it it led to. Bring it all back. Highest highs, lowest lows, the lowest low, and the highest high of my entire life, straight up. Um, <coughs> happened in, in, within one week, uh, within three days. So, um, yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart to anyone mm -hmm. who's listening that shared that. It meant the world to me and my family. And uh, a couple months ago, in February, <coughs> we actually celebrated the one-year anniversary of my dad still being here. Wow. That's um, amazing, bro. And we, we did a, a life celebration. That's amazing. I love Woo! That. I, love that. I love that. Life. Mikey, the last time you were on the pod, this had already happened. This did not? The last time you were on, no, 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 no. We, it had already happened because you didn't want to talk about it. No, no, no. I, so I just, I, what I was saying earlier is that um, you guys asked me to do another pod. And I said I didn't want to talk. You can check the timeline. Okay. See when laser okay. focus. See, my that, first. That just goes to show that we're not paying attention. <laughs> okay, fine. You're yeah. not paying attention. I'm not, pay I'm not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. My bad. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah. the fact that uh, we were like, even before we started rolling on this one, we're like, oh yeah, let's talk about Mike. Let's talk about what he's been up to. He's been doing all these projects, and you know, da 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 da. And you said, 
hey, I'm actually down to talk about my dad's thing this time. Like, literally, I hadn't even thought. Like, I write notes for every episode. <laughs> Not one thought was like, I wonder if Mike's down to talk about his dad today. So that came from you. And that's where we're like, okay, cool. Let's ditch the format. Let's just talk. And that's the beauty of this thing. It's it's the, like, if, if like, the spirit moves you to get to a, a, a conversation topic that you feel like your spirit wants to talk about, let this be that open space. And as we're kind of rounding out our season three, like I think there's no better way than to like just really tap in with like the co-founders of this thing, but then also just to like talk about some real life stuff that you genuinely have on your heart. And so I'm personally just like really encouraged and really just like, yeah, this is what we're supposed to talk about today. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? I, uh, you know, last thing I want to say, uh, maybe just to, I know we got to wrap it up. So my, my last thoughts, um, hopefully this can, uh, this might serve as useful to anyone listening. Um, a couple of things that I, I was very thankful for uh, and I learned from that experience is one, you never, um, you sometimes social media makes it look like the world is a certain way and there's so many it's just a reminder so many people doing great work doing all the good things and if you spend all your time on social media or spend a lot of time you're just seeing who else is on social media and the images they're projecting and so don't let that make your view of the world more pessimistic don't let that you know don't let the pessimism via what you see there um kind of take over in your perspective of reality because man i i was i was, I was introduced to freaking angels through that experience with my dad and mm. they're just they're they might not even see it on social media they probably saw someone else from social media share it in a reddit thread or in their group <laughs> thread, you know and so i think that's a huge thing i wanted to just remind myself of to not to not be pessimistic in that way through through my interactions with social media uh, and to be thankful for the tool uh, and the community and to anyone who and just be reminded the gratitude i have for everybody another thing i want to share is kind of a smaller note but randomly if it's helpful for anyone man like journaling and writing things down mm. is is really important yeah it's been one of the hands down the biggest like life changers uh game changers in my life in the past uh, i want to say like four years um and i i have a list of like i have a task list and i have a journal and um that task list i have now um that you know i have that for my i told myself if any emergency like happens like for my homies i'm i have my contacts from the police departments my press contact like i wanted to have a protocol ready now because i i wrote those things down of like, if something goes down, like, oh, I, I want it, I want access to this. Mm. You know, so much life happens to you. If you don't document it, it's really hard to reaccess those things, right? And so on a, on a, like a purely logistic level, like I, you, it's great to write things down, but then also just on an emotional level, I haven't even gone back to what I've written during that time. But last thing I'll share is uh on my one year anniversary with my family celebration of my my dad's return life we're just talking it's still pretty casual and just because that's our family we're not a super emotional you know the vulnerable emotionally vulnerable family that definitely checked us though that experience but my mom just randomly we're like we have a cake for my dad it's pretty lighthearted. my mom goes um I actually wrote a journal during while your dad was missing. Whoa. And I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, do you want to share? Yeah, 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 She's yeah, like, yeah. Let me go find it. And so, like, she goes upstairs, what she brings freak. it down, and she, like, um, do some breathing exercises because i want to just share we're, we're at the tail end of the pod i want to just share the important aspect as to why i want to share this is um yeah she starts reading like the first couple sentences and she starts breaking down crying 
I'm tearing up already because it's it's the realest shit I ever heard yeah, my mom say. Yeah, of course. Asian American families, you know, especially first generation Korean. I'm sure uh, many of you can relate that you know you don't get into these emotionally vulnerable or super real conversations about your truest emotions. Um, and just off her first couple sentences, I was I was just broken. She couldn't even finish it. She read like the first sentence of what's going on in her mind. Mm. Um, and then she couldn't do it. And then, so then I, I take her, her journal. And then when I start reading it, um, oh no, I try to read it. Is it I, all in Korean? But I can't read my mom's Korean writing. <laughs> I was cute. about to say, because yeah, yeah. if I said yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. going to take me like a week to read the this. Thing is, the thing is, I can read Korean, but she's writing like journaling, right? Oh, so it's, so like, it's like a little... It's like like, chicken, yeah, it looks yeah. like chicken scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad reads it. And when I hear my dad read it, I'm just breaking Fudge. down. And it's the... Long story short... It's, it's like the realest shit I ever heard my mom say. It's like this, almost like a message that she's saying to, as if he's deceased, actually. What? Like an obituary. Yeah. That's but crazy. it's like, it's not an obituary because she's talking kind of to my dad, mm. almost. It's like a, just talk to him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And there's like, it's not even like it's this outpouring of, of emotions per se she's like you mother pucker it's it's it's, there's a tone of that yeah and it's shit like that that hits deeper right 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 you know what i mean it's the a couple sentences that just clues you in on their dynamic their reality their perspective you know just so fucking real it's not all this gushing love letter would not have been as real it's 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 the articulation that you just get infused fast forward like Oh my God, I see your perspective and I see how you're seeing this and you, how you and your, they talk and how you, wow. work. it's just, yeah. And so that was like fucking crazy experience. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to share about that for anyone listening, it's like, man, journaling, because I mean, you you heard it here. We're already forgetting details about stuff. We're already, you know, I'm already had to look up Paul Ganelin again. You know what I mean? This is a guy that like we were, I was in deep contact with like for a week, a couple weeks after, I messaged him again. But you know, year and a half out, right? You you it's hard if you don't document these things, these mm. poignant experiences. There's like a practical level of things that can help you, but also the emotional level of like what what that can draw out later for you and what that can do for you. And who knows what that might do again for me years from now. Um, and so I, I just encourage anyone like, man, journaling, even if you're just like throwing up thoughts, there's no better way to capture your time, your experiences. Cause we all know social media don't, you know what I mean? Mm it's your truest reflection of what you share with yourself so yeah that's 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 the last thing i want to share like document your your story from your perspective because no one else is going to do it for you and you're you're going to thank yourself and as i'm also thinking about how like i, I speak to myself as a friend now mm. you got to be nicer to yourself and your mm. brain you know we're like very mm-hmm. mean to ourselves sometimes to push ourselves. but it's like no we also gotta be like very kind to ourselves, and i think that that is a way to speak to yourself. So, yeah, document life in, in any way that you can, as regularly as you can. Put that put that on the docket, because you never know how that'll um, service your future self. And you and you want to be homies with your future self, right? You want to hook up your future self. You want to do them a solid. That is the last that's thing to share. That's good. You just answered all the stuff that we were going to ask you anyway. So that's a great way to like send this pot off. Uh, yeah, I know we're a little bit on a time constraint. And we also know like, man, we didn't know where this conversation was going to go, but it went where it was supposed to go. Um, what a great way to kind of like round out this season. And like we've had many, many incredible conversations on this pod, but like having Mike back in our uh last ish episode um was the perfect way to round it out and like you being able to tell a very very real life story for you that like over here we're all like absolutely connected to so uh thank you mike for for coming on and and sharing man thanks for bringing me back man 
Um, yeah, I don't know, y'all. Thank you guys for showing up and listening, watching, and subscribing and sharing. We appreciate all of that. If you're finding it for the first time, we have many episodes before. Amazing guests like Mike. Make sure you like and subscribe. Kinja's podcast, Cast with a K, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're all on everything. And um, share it, tag us. We'll regram it, all the dope stuff. And uh, we just want to thank you guys. Remember, tell people that you love, that you love them. Hold them dear. And always, Kinja Bang. Kinja Bang. Thank you.